Hey everyone, how are we doing today? This is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit, and welcome to today's crash course video on hand reading basics. So it's very important that you can hand read in poker at least to some extent because everything you do in poker is based off the assumptions you're making about villain's range and villain's frequencies and reactions with that range. So in this video I'm going to talk about the three L's of hand reading and how we can use them to understand hand reading from a more conceptual standpoint. Okay, so the three L's of hand reading are linear, logical, and learning. And it's important that you understand all three. So let's take this first situation where we open, end up getting called by the cutoff, go heads up to it, and let's start by assigning cutoff a range. So let's assume that he would set mine against us, he'd three bet queens, he'd call some of the top side suited connectors, and he'd call with like ace jack and king queen hands that we don't think he'd necessarily three bet with, but we don't think he'd necessarily fold either. And we're also plugging our whole cards over there. So let's just assume that this is the range. Now, when you assign a range of hands, what you want to understand is that this range should not get larger at any point in the hand. Because as you get more and more information, as the cutoff does more and more stuff, whether it's folding, whether it's raising, whether it's calling, it doesn't matter, his range should not get larger. His range can only get smaller and smaller and closer and closer to the actual hand that he has. So it's very important that you understand that. And there are certain situations where maybe a player has a super tight range to start, but even still, it can never get larger than that. It can stay the same size, as in it can stay at 8.14% of hands the entire way through the hand, but chances are it's most likely going to get smaller. It cannot get larger. And that's a lot of the linear part of the three L's. So in this situation where we end up catching a flush draw and two over cards, we see bet, totally typical see bet, and the cutoff calls. So when the cutoff calls, we've gotten information about his hand, and thus we have to think about how that's going to influence his range. Does he realistically have the same exact range of hands when he calls preflop and calls the c-bet? Again, we've gotten information, things have happened, he's done something, now we should think about how that influences his range. So from a linear standpoint, well, let's assume that he's going to continue with middle pair or better and any flush draw and obviously the big draws as well. So we see that that's roughly 53% of the time. So realistically, is he going to be calling the flop with things like ace, jack, and king, queen? Well, we just assume no. So it's not like if, say, the queen comes on the turn that we should assume that he has king, queen anymore. If we don't think he would call the flop with it, then he can't have hit that card on the turn. And it's very important that you're understanding that. You don't just say, oh, well, the queen came, so all of a sudden he can have ace, queen, king, queen, queen, jack, and queen, ten. Well, probably not, because you didn't put that in the range he would even get involved with to see that card, either by calling preflop or by calling the flop. Again, your hand reading has to be linear. You don't just get to the turn and start throwing random hands into his range and saying, oh, well, he could have hit this queen a million different ways, when realistically he probably did not catch the queen a million different ways. So that's part of being linear and part of the three L's. And the second one is logical. So if the cutoff is a tight player, is it logical that we're assigning him a hand like 8-5 suited or ace-9 suited or 9-deuce suited? Is a tight player realistically going to call you preflop and ever get involved with a hand like that? And I'd say probably not. And that's part of being logical is understanding how wide their range realistically is, not just when they call preflop, but also when they continue on any given street, and really thinking, okay, is it logical that this person could have this? A fish, yes, a fish could have nine deuce of hearts. Doesn't make any sense to us, but to a fish, they don't care because they just like to see flops. So thinking again about a logical range of hands, logical in the sense of how they would get involved preflop, and also logical in the sense of how they would continue postflop. Is it logical? that the cutoff is going to call the flop a lot of the time with gut shots. Maybe, maybe not. That's up for debate, and that's part of the assumption you have to make. But it's important that, again, you are being very logical and also that you're being very linear when you're trying to assign a range of hands. And that's before you make a play, whether it's a value bet or a bluff. 
And then the third L is learning. And when we're talking about learning, it means that we always want to be adjusting and learning about an opponent's range so we can make better decisions going forward. So say we take a spot where we raise with aces, end up getting three bet, and we just decide to four bet and get it all in preflop. Well, if the button were a knit player, is it going to be a little shocking that he shows up with seven tier? And I'd say probably. One, that he would three bet at preflop. Two, that he would five bet at preflop. So this is something that might be a little shocking for a nitty type player. And that's something that I would want to take a note on. And the L, the learning part of this, is learning that his three bet range is not just the nuts. That his five bet range is not just the nuts. That either one, he overvalues sevens and thinks that sevens plus is a really, really strong pair preflop, or that he will sometimes get involved, get a little frisky, and use a range that's not just queens plus, kings plus, queens plus ace king, whatever it is. So regardless of what happens in this hand, you definitely want to be taking a note on the big blind and learning about his range so you can make better assumptions going forward. So it gives you a better idea on the logical range he could show up with. You know, it may not have been logical for us to, starting this hand, assume that he had sevens, but once we see sevens show up in a situation like this, now it's helped us assign and learn about the possible ranges he could have and what he might think about hands, blah, blah, blah. So again, the three L's, linear, logical, learning, and always be learning, one of, I know, just poker in general, but also learning about your specific opponent's ranges, what he's likely to have, and also learning about default ranges. You know, if a tag opens from early position, what's the default tag's range from that spot? What is a default lag 3-bet when they 3-bet on the button against an early position open? Is it strong-weighted? Is it weak-weighted? Whatever. So use these three L's to understand hand reading and get started doing your own hand reading exploration and work. And I think you're going to do much, much better in this game because everything you do is based upon hand reading and making good assumptions about your opponent's range.